my brother Tom found the radio curbside up in Peoria, Illinois, and he brought it down to me. It was in pretty bad shape cosmetically then, and I managed to get it looking pretty nice. However, it's never played. All the parts are there, but uh, who knows what the original problem was, and there's a lot of gunk and dirt and grime and weather. Uh, whether or not it can be restored is kind of still up in the air to me. The coolest feature of the radio, other than its distinctive styling, is the shutter dial mechanism, which allows you to select from the AM band or first of the short wave bands or second short wave band. The dial remains a full size dial, unlike a lot of markings on one dial, it has a separate mechanism for each band that comes into play when you change bands. It does have a tuning eye tube and uh, supposed to sound very nice when it's working properly from its 15 inch speaker. One other thing, the markings on this AM dial, uh, I did that on a computer about eight years ago because the dial was completely completely gone so I created a replica dial and it turned out pretty good by the time I covered it with lacquer and some other things to make it last. Um, the big pointer is not the selector, that's like the fine-tuning knob. The little pointer here is actually the station indicator. So you get one full spin of the knob when the uh, when it's working properly uh, for a small movement of the main dial. Let me try turning it again. See what I mean? Just one other thing I'd like to point out. Above this radio is a print that I picked up in southern Illinois. It's a 1929 GE uh, industrial calendar print. But I've never seen this particular page of that calendar anywhere else. And it is a uh, cool picture of a couple listening to a low boy console radio in about 1929.